Today, I'm going to be guiding you through how statistical analysis is performed within our 2D SameSpot software. So once we've told SameSpot exactly what it is our experiment was designed to compare, to look at, we come through to the review spot stage. Now, because we've told SameSpot what it is our experiment was looking for, it will automatically determine the most appropriate statistical test to compare our different conditions for us. So when we come through to this stage where we can look at every single spot individually, you can see that I've automatically already got um, p-values to denote statistical significance of changes between my conditions, and I've got a full change between my different conditions automatically. Those are brought in automatically. And to make it even easier to find the spots that are most likely to be of most interest to the researcher, we can use the quick tag feature. So if I right click on my results here, we've got a number of tags built into same spots that are the most commonly used for researchers um, to find what they're looking for quickly. So, and these are customizable. So if I just click here, if I want to find a spot, if I want to tag all of the spots that have a, P, a significant difference, uh, a p-value less than 0 0.05, I can do that here. I can do less than 0 0.05, less than or equal to 0 0.05, greater than or equal to, and greater than. Um, so there is a, a level of control over this for the researcher. And if I click on create tag, it will automatically tag all of those spots for me. So I know which one to look at out of my entire result set. Likewise, another very useful quick tag is the max fold change uh, quick tag. So again, we can change this. We can look at anything with a fold change greater than five. Uh, let's put in two for now. So if we create that tag, it will also tag those ones that we previously tagged with another tag. So I can see here that this spot is both statistically significant and it's got a full change greater than two, for example. And this really allows the researcher to very quickly find spots that have been significantly changed between the different experimental conditions out of all of the different spots. So it's really useful for very quickly finding those spots that are likely to require further investigation, might be of more information in more use to a researcher. So if we come down here to the bottom left, we've got the ability to change the contrast of our images just to find those, just to get better visibility of maybe fainter spots within your image. And I can change, if you've got many conditions here in the right hand window, you can change the size of um, the zoomed in view on your spot just to try and get all of those in so you can compare them if you have multiple, if you have six or seven conditions, you can compare them all together. Or if you've just got two, like I have in this example, and you want to see them really close up as possible, you can make it as large as possible. So show all outlines will show you all of the outlines for all of the spots that are near the spot that you're looking at. And if you cl left click on them, you'll be taken to this spot and the, the data associated with that on the left hand side. We've got also the ability to view your spots in 3D. Now, you can also change the size of the peak, the scale of the peak, to make it easier for you to uh, visualize the spots. Because you may look at a spot and think it's, it's very faint, it's not very intense, but looking at the 3D view can give you an idea that actually there is a spot there in terms of the image. It's just that it's very faint compared to the background or compared to um, the way you're seeing it uh, as an image with your eyes. Um, you can also click here to see the full image. And again, this is uh, interactive. So a left click will take you to that spot and the data associated with that in the left hand side. Uh, you can label spots, but we'll come back to that at another point. And you can also get a graph of the confidence variables for all of your spot data. Now, at the bottom section of this window, you get the expression profile of the two of the spots that you're looking at in the two different conditions that you're looking at them in. So if I come to a really, let's come to this one. So this spot has a p-value of uh, 0 0.001, and it's got a full change of 4.3. So this is a spot that is has changed dramatically, significantly between our two different conditions on the image. And you can see here that the expression profile is a measure of the fold change um, that's shown here. It's just a visual method of that. So you see here in condition A versus condition B, there's significant fold change 
vastly outside of the standard deviation of the, of the results. If you click here, you can get all of the raw spot information that you may be interested in, the volume, the background, the peak height, the image name, and all of this can be um, copied and pasted into Excel just using Control c and Control v into Excel. So it's kind of a standard CSV format there. If you did wish to export this data to another statistical package, to a spreadsheet for reporting, anything like that. Um, on the bottom right hand side here, we've got an overview of all, the entire image of the gel. So if you left click and drag around, you can um, view all of your spots. And if you, left, if you release the left click on a spot, it will take you to that spot. Um, so this is probably a better example of a 3D, there you go, better example of a 3D view, so you can get the full peak there with the topography shown by the contour map lines. So the final section is just having a look at your, your view here in the 2D spots, in, in the 2D montage view. So. In this example, I've not gone through any kind of normalization. I've not removed any spots that don't fit any inclusion criteria. I've literally just taken every spot out of the image that I can just for this example. If there were some spots that I didn't want to include in my analysis, I've got a few tools here to add and subtract those from the analysis. So say if I didn't want this spot in my analysis anymore, left click on delete, left click on the spot and you'll see it's removed from your results on the left hand side and you can no longer visualize it on the right hand side either. If there was a spot that for some reason wasn't detected automatically, you can add that manually. So you would find a spot that is near that spot. Then say if there was a spot here that I wanted to add to my experimental condition, click the add button, left click and then drag my mouse out to kind of fit around the spot. And then that spot is added onto your results on the left hand side and is treated just like any other spot in the analysis. And you'll see that these spots are automatically drawn in the exact same position because our images are aligned and because our, our image al alignment algorithm is so intelligent, it allows you to say that when you've added a spot to one image, it will put the exact same spot in the exact same position on the other image. So this is the real power of being able to very accurately align your images is that you can make sure that you are comparing like for like between your two different images. Uh, we've got also got the option to merge different spots. And again, that's left click, left click, one giant spot. Or you can split spots. Now, if you've got two spots that are very intense, close together, there is um, the possibility that same spots will merge those because it can't tell the difference between two very intense areas that overlap. So if you do need to manually split split spots, come up to the split tool, left click on the edge of one of your spots, and then you get this handy kind of um, splitting bar. So left click again, and it will split those two spots where you place that line. And then if you want to come back and look around at your different spots again, just come back to the select tool. And then you can jump around again to look at all of your different spots. So once we've done that, once we've reviewed our spots manually and edited them where appropriate, you come through to the stats side of same spots. Now again, this has got a huge number of spots in because I've not done any kind of filtering. So on your window for stats, you can see that we've got our tags remain and we can narrow this list down um, by just kind of creating a filter here. So we've also got this option in the review spot stage. So if we want to create a filter to only look at the spots that we've tagged, for example, you can use your tags here and drag them into one of three categories. So do we want to show only spots that here have these tags? Do we want to show spots that have at least one of these tags if we have multiple tags? Or do we want to hide spots that have these tags? So if you tagged ones that aren't relevant, known quantities, things that you're not interested in, standards, you can hide those by left clicking and dragging across. So uh, let's use the two filters that I used before. So p-value less than 0.05, statistically significant result, and spots that have undergone a max bold change greater than or equal to two. So if I click OK here, 
you can see it's brought that, that, that number of spots down significantly to only those spots that were tagged in the previous step. And again, these are your, your, um, your list of statistically significant values, your results list on the left is narrowed down to only those spots as well. So here is obviously your main image with all of your spots in that have been filtered down. On the right hand side, we've got a principal component analysis. Now, this is a way of grouping spots in a, statistically in a way that it believes those spots are related to each other. The, the changes are in the same direction by the same magnitude. It's, uh, we believe those are grouped and those are related to your experimental condition. Um, you can also view your spots in the form of a dendrogram and you can change the sensitivity of your dendrogram um, by clicking and dragging there. And again, this forms kind of a tree of what statistically analyzing your data, what it believes, which spots it believes are related to each other. So could potentially be grouped, have been affected in the same way by your experimental conditions. So you can see here, and this is fully interactive as well. So left click and you can bring up those spots um, that are in those kind of, in that kind of grouping. Um, so this is a really powerful tool to allow researchers when they're doing proteomic work to have a look at spots they believe might be influencing each other or influenced by their experimental condition. So for example, if you were looking at kind of inhibition upstream of a protein and six proteins were uh, changed by the introduction of an inhibitor for that upstream process, you could say, oh, well, I've, I've inhibited this pathway and these proteins have been affected. Therefore, I think all of these proteins are regulated by this pathway for an example, but it's just a, um, a statistical way of grouping your proteins together based on um, similarity of change. And then you've also got the option for a power analysis, and this is a standard power analysis to see if you've got enough replicates within your experiment to say with confidence that your uh, statistical results are, are bulletproof or are solid or reliable. And again, at the bottom, we've got, for all of your spots, if you click on them, you've got your expression profile. So this is full change based on standard normalized volume between your different conditions. You can also, so you can do that, you can express that as a standardized expression profile or a normalized expression profile. Um, typically, there's no difference between the two, just depending on whether you want standardized or normal. And you've also got the full ANOVA table for the statistical test that has been done within same spots. So if you want to um, copy and paste this, remove this um, to uh, for a poster, for a paper, just to show how you've reached the conclusions that you have statistically, or if you want to double check the statistical analysis within same spots within another piece of software, uh, you can right click on it and add it to the clip gallery. And from that point, you can save it as an image and then import that image into pretty much every other piece of software that you would use, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, any, any of the uh, big hitters. As ever, thanks for listening. So that was a quick run through of the statistical tools that are built into same spots to help save operators time in identifying significant changes in spots. If you'd like to try a free demo for 14 days of same spots, please check out the link in the description below.